Hi everyone, Matthew Monas here, and Asus makes some great 17-inch gaming laptops, especially for the money. And the Rogue G752 series is one of their latest entries on the market. It packs powerful hardware, runs Intel's latest Skylake architecture, and it just looks really cool. So here's my review. Now if you're a gamer and want your laptops designed to scream you're a gamer, then the Rogue series is for you. I mean, look at this thing, it looks awesome. The whole design is inspired by Lockheed Martin's F-22 stealth fighter jet, from the angles on the lid down to the crazy looking exhaust on the back. The top is made out of aluminum with brush strokes and the gray color is what Asus calls armored titanium. Directly in the middle is the Rogue logo with two angled strips in plasma copper. Now the rest of the laptop is made out of plastic and highly susceptible to scratches. That includes the plexiglass on the bottom which showcases the heat pipes and cooling fans. Now this thing has a lot of ports and on the left side you have a Noble Lock, two USB 3.0 ports and a DVD drive that reads and writes. On the right side you have a gigabit ethernet jack, HDMI port, mini display port, another two USB 3.0 ports, a USB Type-C 3.1 Thunderbolt 3 port, and your audio jacks. Now the review unit I have here runs Intel 6th generation Skylake i7 6700HQ processor, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, two hard drives, a 1 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, and a 128 gigabyte PCIe SSD. The 17.3 inch IPS display is non-touch and supports hardware G-Sync. The entire laptop weighs 9.5 pounds and costs $1,800 US. Now this model sits somewhere in the middle in terms of performance between the cheaper G752VL and the more expensive G752VY. The type of GPU RAM configuration and the size of the SSD drive determine the price. The lower end model comes with an NVIDIA 965M, while the most expensive one sports a 980. Now the great thing about bigger laptops is that they are usually more configurable and upgrading this one is quite easy. Just flip the little flap on the bottom and take out one screw and you have access to the hard drives and RAM. You are able to fit one M2 SATA drive and two PCIe SSD drives. The RAM slots are a different story and only two out of the four are accessible. So if you plan on adding up to 64 gigabytes of RAM later on in the future, make sure you choose a configuration with 32 gigabytes. The 17.3 inch IPS display is full HD and if you're a gamer, you'll be happy to know it includes G-Sync and runs at 75 Hertz. This is great for gaming since you won't get that screen tearing effect. The screen is bright, has a good contrast ratio, great viewing angles, and has a pretty good color representation. It's not a monitor to use for video editing, but perfect for gaming. It has a 70 to 75% minimum Adobe RGB, and because there's a matte finish, you get little to no glare. Above the display rests the 1.2 megapixel 720p webcam. Now it's not the greatest webcam, it makes everything look a little muddy, but it's fine for the occasional video conference or Skype call. Now if you've used the G751, then you'll be familiar with the keyboard on the G752. I really like the layout of this keyboard, along with the rubber textured keys. The keys, including the arrow keys, are full sized and there's plenty of space to rest your palms. The backlighting is red with three different levels to choose from. It also sports a dedicated numpad, which is a nice touch, and I like the dedicated five macro keys on the top left. There's also a screencast key that automatically broadcasts your games for free to popular platforms like Twitch. So I really enjoyed the typing experience. The keys feel solid and have a travel distance of 2.5 millimeters, which is long enough that each press provides nice feedback. Other features include anti-ghosting, allowing you to have to 30 keys at the same time with the keyboard correctly recognizing them. And finally, there's very little flex in the frame. The touchpad, on the other hand, is just okay. It's big, which is great, giving you lots of room, but I felt it to be a little unresponsive, especially with double tapping. Clicking wasn't perfect either. You need to be precise with each click, and there's little room for error. Multi-gestures worked fine, including pinch to zoom and scrolling. You're better off using an external mouse, and I can imagine most of you will be if you're gaming with it. Now this is a big laptop, which means there's more space to put speakers. On the bottom lies a subwoofer which pumps out a decent amount of bass. The speakers themselves are out of sight and placed behind the screen on the deck of the laptop. Now the sound gets really loud. It sounds pretty clear, but there is a little bit of an echo to it. But the good thing is you can use the Sonic app that comes installed with the Asus laptop that allows you to adjust the equalization settings, and you can get some pretty impressive sound. Next up is performance, and let's start with the hard drive 
drives first. There's two of them and the bigger one terabyte HGST 7200 RPM drive boasted pretty good results. Read and write speeds were consistent with an average of 115 megabytes per second. As for the 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD Samsung drive, the results were a little disappointing. Read speeds were really good, but the write speeds were quite low, especially considering how fast PCIe drives can be. It's something to keep in mind when choosing your configuration. Daily productivity tasks like using Microsoft Office, browsing the web with multiple browsers open, and streaming three to four HD videos is done with extreme ease. You can also run more intensive software applications like Adobe Photoshop and edit 4K video. Just keep in mind that the display is meant for gaming and not as color accurate as some creatives might want it to be. In terms of gaming, it shows a nice performance boost compared to the cheaper model that has the NVIDIA GTX 960M. Diablo 3 at high settings running at 1920 by 1080 ran at 130 to 140 frames per second. Shadow of Mortar, which is a little bit more graphically intensive, ran well too at higher settings. It averaged between 70 to 75 frames per second. And finally, Crisis 3, which is more graphically intensive than the other two. I tested it with full settings up to high and it averaged about 20 to 30 frames per second. It's definitely playable, but you might want to lower them a bit to have a better gaming experience. Now, before I give you the numbers on heat, I just have to say the G752VT is extremely quiet for a gaming laptop. When the laptop is under full load, the cooling system does a good job at keeping the noise to a minimum. It has dual fans for the CPU and GPU and four heat pipes to help make it possible. Heat comes out of the back through the grills blowing away from the user. When the notebook is idling, it stayed relatively cool, averaging around 80 to 90 Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. Under full load, the temperatures did increase a little bit and at times pushing 105 degrees Fahrenheit between the O and P key. Overall, I am happy with its cooling system. The battery inside is 66 watt hours, which is pretty small considering the size and power of this laptop. I didn't expect good battery life to begin with and my tests confirmed my expectations. Light browsing and light productivity tasks with the screen set to 50% brightness got me just under four hours of use. Gaming on the other hand, it barely lasted too. And the laptop takes two hours to fully charge. All right, so here's what I liked about the Rogue G752. It has a great display for gaming. It's matte, has anti-glare, and it also has G-Sync and runs at 75 Hertz. It's a very powerful laptop with lots of room to upgrade down the road. And finally, the laptop just looks really cool, runs cool, and stays fairly quiet. Now here's some of the things that I didn't like. It has poor battery life, so if you're planning to be away from the wall, just keep that in mind. And also the touchpad could be a lot better. I found double tapping to be inconsistent and the buttons itself were very inconsistent as well. And finally, I feel it should be a lot better materials. The front of it, which is made out of aluminum, is great, but the rest of the laptop is encased in plastic. I would have loved to see some more consistency. So overall, this is a very good laptop or gaming laptop for the price. Now, for all of you cost conscious viewers out there, there's one tip I can give you guys. Consider the G751. It's pretty much the exact same laptop, just looks a little bit different, has a few different ports, and instead of using a Skylake processor, it uses a Haswell one. But the performance difference is very minimal and you'll save yourself some money. So anyways, guys, that is my review on the G75 VT. I want you guys think in the comments below. If you have one or don't have one, let me know what you like and dislike about it. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. And if you really enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. And I'll see everybody in the next video.